Okay, hi everyone. Larissa Russell from Creative You, and welcome to the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Today I have with me Fatima Sumar. Fatima is a philanthropic entrepreneur. I had to practice that word, and I still, <laughs> I, still <laughs> I know it's a tongue twister. Fatima is a philanthropic entrepreneur who helps people live their healthiest version of themselves and find their voice on social media. Fatima is an international best-selling author and co-host of the Healthy Way Vibes. So welcome, Fatima. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes, it's exciting because we are actually co-authors of the same book, the international we best-selling, are? The Power of Why. So that's exciting. Um, so can you share with us some of your story and your path that's brought you here? Um, well, I'm not going to give away my entire story because um, it's all in the power of why. So do make sure you pick up that story. But yeah. it started off for me as, you know, I, as a five-year-old, I knew that I wanted to be a businesswoman. I just, I, I just knew that I was supposed to be this, you know, powerful businesswoman, you know, with a conglomerate and, and also it runs in the family where, you know, my dad has had his own business. My grandparents had their own business, their siblings had their own business and so on and so forth. But life definitely had its own path. Um, <laughs> it, it was, it's been an interesting journey. It's never a straight line. It's, it's got its dips and valleys and curves and you know, everything. Um, but basically I started three businesses and um, in that whole time frame, I endured a hip flexor ligament where I couldn't walk for two years. So I had to teach myself how to learn. I had to le- relearn how to walk um, and do all those things that I used to enjoy. Uh, you name it. Like I've been through some interesting, interesting stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That oh, wow. Yeah. When you hear people's, you know, you know, because everybody just lives their own life and they don't think about really what other people go through. And I've found that this book and, and reading everybody's stories has been amazing to, it has to been. connect and see, you know, oh, mine might have been pretty crappy, but, you know, other people had some other major things happen to you. <laughs> so, yeah. And they overcame. So what does healing with creativity mean to you? Um, so healing with creativity. So it's actually a great question because I've always been very creative. Um, So I used to have a wedding consulting business and I ran it for about 12 years, did a lot of events. Like I would average about 30 to 40 events a month. Mm -hmm. Um, And then of course, when I I tore my hip flexor ligament, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. And so that meant I couldn't be doing my wedding planning Mm -hmm. or any of that stuff because it was taxing. And when I was finally able to actually walk and heal and whatever, I couldn't do it. It was just, it was way too much for me. So in the process of me healing myself, I actually started, um, I started taking up jewelry making and that's how I designed my jewelry. And so that was actually very, very therapeutic for me in terms of, you know, just being able to put my mind to somewhere else and create beautiful pieces. Here's, here's an example. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and so that was just, you know, it was, it started off as just a hobby, whatever. And then the next thing I know, people were saying, Hey, where'd you get these from? These are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I started commissioning pieces and, and in that process, it just, it, it transformed. My life started transforming. My creativity was back again. I wasn't in that lull. Um, and then if you look a few years later, I've always been very creative, whether it's writing poetry. So I've actually published another book, um, a book on poetry, Mm -hmm. um, poems that I've written from grade eight onwards. So whether they were school assignments or whether they were, you know, feelings as to how I was feeling, whatever, or if I had written them for a friend, I I put them all in and I composed them. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until after that I actually started looking at alternative medicine or alternative ways to heal Mm -hmm. um and then you know i also got really in 2014 so a lot of it will be in the book you'll find a lot of it in the book but in 2014 at the beginning of the year i had headaches for 15 days consecutive 
like really, really painful, bad headaches where I went to the doctor. He said, just take this pill and you'll be fine. I said, no way am I doing that. I need to figure out what is going on. And so from there, my quest, my, I started furthering my quest for a healthy lifestyle. Um, I've always been very cautious and very healthy, like very active. But then of course, when I had my hip flexor ligament, I couldn't walk. So I went from someone who was a dancer, rollerblader, a skater, just out and about to, you know, walk, like just stand still. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine what that was like for me. But anyways, uh, so through that, I started really looking and discovering why was I getting these headaches and I discovered I was gluten intolerant. So then I started getting really creative with my foods because now it's like, well, I, there's certain foods that I can't have because they don't work well with my system. So any, so coming back to your question, anytime there has been sort of like a really big shift in my life, I've come out of it through creative creativity. Yeah. And that's how I found my purpose. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you, you probably almost answered this one, but do you think there's a driving force that inspires you? And can you explain that maybe? Yes, there is a driving force. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I actually, so the philanthropic part comes in here and that is I've always been of service and service is one of my number one. It's my fundamental pillars in life. Mm -hmm. Um, and so as a young age, like a young girl, probably at the age of five or six, we started volunteering. We, I was in girl guides, brownies. So I've always wanted to do, um, what's best for others. Yes, I'm helping myself, but it's really, how can I help others to change their life, to have a healthier lifestyle, whether it be through crystals, whether it be through paints, whether it just be through creativity in any form but it, my driving force is how can I make the next person's life better yes yes I love that I was having a conversation with my meditation class I do a morning meditation and journaling class and we were talking about people's purpose is to be in service to others and what does that mm-hmm. mean for each person and everybody has a different purpose um, like the main purpose is to be in service to others, but they have a different way of, of doing that. And it's, yeah, absolutely amazing. And it is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so you did talk about, uh, you know, physical pain, but how has a past pain informed your life purpose? Um, so the past pain, basically there are lessons to learn, right? Um, I was at a, I was at a, place that I hated like I was in a very 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 toxic environment Mm -hmm. I worked at the airport and I basically in the first three months I put on um 60 pounds like I had never been that heavy and so having that hip injury it was painful but it got me reconnected with my purpose because when I was actually working at the airport I had completely shut off my intuition was gone. Like I just became a very crabby person, someone who I didn't even recognize, Mm -hmm. but it was because of the hip injury looking back and, you know, it was honestly a blessing in disguise. And that's what propelled me to look at my purpose and to see why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then of course, you know, when you hit 40, you have that, Oh no, that big almost midlife crisis. And again, I was just like, what am I doing? What have I done with life? I haven't accomplished what I wanted to, or, you know, people say I have, but I haven't felt like I have done, I've made a difference. And so again, you revisit your purpose, you revisit your why. And things just get clear as you start looking inside and finding where you're really meant to be. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. So what would you say is your favorite creative healing modality? Oh my, (laughs) that's very tough because I've used so many different modalities Mm -hmm. and I think it's basically what I've needed at the time would be my favorite. Mm. Um, So whether it's like jewelry or even creating, you know, creating this beautiful centerpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I still do a lot of decorations here and there, like, you know, different centerpieces, because I still like that, or whether it is through painting or 
whether it's through cooking. It honestly is at the moment, whatever it is that I need at the moment. Yeah. And then I also play with a lot of crystals. Like I have crystals from all over. And, you know, when I was a young girl, I never really understood why I was so drawn to like geodes and all these crystals and rocks and whatever. And now it's actually coming very clear why I was drawn yeah. to them. <laughs> so honestly, that's a very tough question to answer. It's whatever is right now for me. That's the modality. That's my favorite at that time. Yeah, I, I completely understand that because there's so many that I do. So I, I completely understand that. So what would you say is your greatest accomplishment to date? Huh. Well, um, when I was 12, I was actually part of, a, there was four of us who had co-founded a program. Mm -hmm. It was the Young Volunteers Program in our community. So it started off in Richmond, like locally. Mm -hmm. um, as a pilot, so it worked for about, we did it for about a year or a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Then we took it out to uh, like lower mainland. Um, and then this program went national, so across Canada. And now today it is across international waters. So yeah. j knowing that I was able to make a difference to have some direction, um, Teaching is another thing that I do. Like I absolutely love teaching and, and it's all volunteering that I do on every Saturday. I've been doing it for the last 28 years. If someone said, Hey, uh, I've got something going on on a Saturday. We need your help. Sorry. I will not give that up. I absolutely will not give that up because just being able to see the kids after, you know, they've gone through school and everything. It's unreal. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So that would probably be my greatest achievement. But I mean, of course, we're the international bestsellers now, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, those are, I have a lot of different things in that sense, materialistic or career wise, but mm -hmm. it's the service that really stands out to me. Yes. Yeah. I I totally understand that. And, you know, as I was saying about the, you know, our purpose is about being in service to others and finding our way to do that is, is really so important. So important. And so if you could change one aspect of our society through your work, what would it be? Um, it would be to have people really look at themselves and say that, hey, you know what, it is okay, but also to find healthier options for them. Because our the way that we eat now is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so rather than turning to a pharmaceutical pill, why not do it in a healthier, holistic manner? Because that actually goes a long way. Rather than just putting a Band-Aid and ripping off that Band-Aid, get to the root. And, you know, if there's any way that you can give back to someone, it honestly makes a huge difference in your life. You don't realize it, but it makes a huge, huge, huge impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. So through, through nutrition, through conversation, through service, um, and then, you know, through education, that's how I can make someone's life a little bit better. I like that. I like that a lot. So what inspirational advice would you give someone who is struggling? For someone who is struggling, you know what? Do what you're doing. Keep your head up high um, and ask for the help. If you need help, ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes it may cost you, but there's other ways you can get the help at no cost or very little cost. So don't let that stop you. Um, there's different ways that you can you can get that. And especially now as we live in in a day and age where it's all, there's a lot of support, there's a lot of internet um, e-commerce businesses, mm -hmm. um, find something that you're aligned with and that you will want to get up early in the morning to say, hey, I have something and I want to make everyone hear it. Everyone has to hear about it because it's something that'll change their life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If it's about you, you're not going to get up. But if it's about 
the bigger picture, that's going to drive you. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I believe that, right? Because we often won't do for ourselves what we'll do for other people. So yeah. if you can turn it around to be, you know, doing for others, and that's what gets you going. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have an inspirational quote that sums up your life journey? You know, I actually like the one from Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's short, but it is, there's so many things that you can pick from and it's up to you to choose what's right for you. Yeah. Right. Every choice that you make is right at that time. Yeah. So it may not be right down the road, but it is right at that time. Yeah. And from that you do grow. Oh, so true. So true. So is there anything else you'd like to add that we maybe haven't discussed today? Don't fear your dreams, but mm -hmm. go for your dreams. Make sure you're making your dreams a reality and not someone else's dreams a reality because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's your soul. It is your heart. It is your, it's your livelihood. It is your lifestyle. Yeah. And, and also ha find a way to have multiple streams of income. You may not just, you, you don't need to necessarily just be attached to one. Mm -hmm. They say in your lifetime, you're going to have at least four to five different careers. So why not amalgamate at the same time? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, so Fatima, thank you. You've uh, generously offered a free gift to our listeners. Can you tell them a little bit about that free gift that you've offered? Uh, yes. So it is an ebook. Um, I will give Larissa a copy of that and she can share that with you guys, but it is on the healthy home. And so basically the things that you would want to do in your home, just a few steps to make it healthier. For example, switching out, you know, rather than having your windows closed, keep your windows open to freshen out your air. You know, not have too many scented items because all those scents combi combined onto your skin, they actually wreak havoc on your body. Mm -hmm. So a few little changes here and there all throughout all of your home that's what you'll find in the healthy um, home ebook. Okay. I love that. Well, that's a great gift. Thank you so much. We'll make sure that we attach the link so people can get that. You're and welcome. So, oh, Fatima, I just want to thank you again for being here. And um, for our listeners, we will see you again next week. And in the meantime, I wish for you an amazingly creative day. Thank you very much for having me. And it was a pleasure. Have you seen the books that I've put out? If you don't know me, I'm Larissa Russell, the owner of Creative You. I currently have a few books available on Amazon, titles such as Gratitude, How to Live with Joy and Gratefulness, A Happier You in 5 Minutes a Day, plus the international bestseller, The Power of Why. And coming later this year is Total Disaster to Total Master, 7 Steps to Your Authentic Self. Click the link below to purchase your copies now.